All right, welcome back to 3D Animation. I wanted to pick up where we left off with doing the bouncing ball and squish and squash or uh, squash and stretch uh, animation technique. Just a few things I didn't show you in the last tutorial about um, you know working in the graph editor and working with these keyframes that are you know can be turned into these tangent points. So if I turn on this, you see we've got this kind of Bezier tangent handle. Well, we talked about how you can bring different subtleties into your animation, right? So and how this is a visual representation of the values. So right now we're looking at you know I've clicked on the sphere and um, you normally if I click on sphere I'd get all of the attributes for at least like the standard kind of translate rotate scale but if I click on say just translate Y then I have isolated the motion that this sphere is traveling when it goes up and then back down again right and if you look at this it's kind of like a smooth ramp up it starts out kind of smooth it speeds up it hits this point it even goes a little farther as it stretches and then it comes back down again right and then it goes back up again and then back down again. So, you know, playing with the controls of these, you know, I can take this point and I could smooth that out so that it no longer goes up past the keyframe. You know, I can go right to there and then it goes right back down again. I don't have to have it so exaggerated, but if I want to, obviously I can click on these tangent handles and I can manipulate that. I could give it way more of a ramp up. So it kind of like continues the flow upwards, slows down, gets to its peak and then comes back down again, right? And, um, you know, I can tilt that left and right, but it's pretty locked. Like, I can't move these handles in and out uh, as it is right now, but there are ways to do that. And I want to show you how you can break these tangents into two halves, right? So I was, like, right around there when we started off. But if we look right up here, um, we have, if I roll over these, we have a whole bunch of different things. So right up here, this little handle is called the break tangent. You can see how like one side of it's white, one side of it's orange. If I select a tangent, like I put my cursor on it and I select it and I choose this break tangent, you'll see I now have little dashed lines. And what that allows me to do is I can now individually control them. So I could like bring that one, like, you know, I could almost like make it go really weird if I go too high with it. Or I could have it like it's ramping up and I could even change this a little bit. Like it comes up and then it peaks for a second and then it goes back up again. So I could have it, if you look at it now, it's gonna go up, come back down for a second and then back up it's almost like it's bouncing on an invisible little shelf there, then bounces and comes back down again. Uh, or vice versa, you know, if I want to, um, sorry, I had to zoom out a little bit to get it, I could make it way sharper. I could bring these in like this. And then it's just like up, down. There's no like slowing down to it. It's just going to go up and immediately right back down. It's going to have this really kind of like ba-boom kind of feel to it. So you can, by breaking the tangents, you can get all this control. Or I can have it slowly come up, like I said, and then a really fast drop off. And if I go like that, it's actually going to dip below. That's going to make it go like below the surface. You can see because I'm going below the original ground plane and then it comes back up again. We don't want that. I'm just showing you how you can get all these varied controls out of it. Uh, and really, you know, get as much as you can, right? So there's a lot of subtleties when it comes to animation, and this is just one of the ways you can bring them in. Now, if I have those as broken tangents and I want to unbreak them, I click it again there. Um, or I'm sorry, actually, I have to click on the, I believe that one will lock them. And then you can see they're kind of locked in this weird tilt. So if you like it, you can always, um, you know, break them again and then you can move them independently again. Now, if you want to get them back to normal, you'd come back over here and like auto tangent it, and then you can see it just brings it back again, and then you can lock them again by like turning, or I'm sorry, I think this one locks it back. Now they're no longer dashed, and they're kind of back to normal. So nothing's ever permanent. You can always bring it back, you know, whether I want to have the Bezier curves, or I want to like flatten it out, um, or maybe I want to make them really sharp, like that's kind of an auto linear one, or again, just kind of like making them go straight out. I can stair step it if I want to. You can see now it's like one side is a tangent, but the other side isn't. It's very flat. Um, I can almost make, I think that's the plateau one. I think you have to have two of them to plateau. Well, I haven't done the plateau one, so I'm not going to guess on that one. But you can have a lot of variation in there. Now, the last thing I want to show you is also how to... Um, you know, you can have broken, um, but you can also um, 
aside from breaking them, you can like free the tangents. So what that means is that not only will I be able to move them independently, but I'll actually be able to change the length of them. Now this gets a little bit more complicated. Um, what you're going to see is right now we have what's called um, um, a non-weighted tangent. So it's non-weighted, and there's a difference between weighted and non-weighted. Weighted will give you a little more control, but it can also cause issues. So as it is right now, just to show you an example of that, if I bring a point like too close to it, it's going to do its best here to still make a smooth curve between them, unless they're like right on top of each other. But see how if like I bring these in, no matter what, it's trying to adjust them so that I at least have some smoothness there, right? Now if I bring these back here, and I go to curves, and I change from uh, right now I'm on non-weighted. If I go to weighted, you'll notice that these tangents, I'm going to go again here, select curve, weighted tangent, and you'll see they're no longer um, uh, round ends on them. They're now little square ends. And uh, if I break these, you'll see right now I'm already able to like stretch these out now in really interesting ways. They're still like, um, they're still locked together right now. I haven't broken them as well as uh, freeing them. It's like two different things, but you can see now I can change the lengths of them now that they're weighted tangents. So you can get some really interesting like variations. Now the problem is if I bring these too close, you'll see they can they, they don't auto curve as easily. Um, you know, there's going to be a little weirdness when they jump up on top of each other. They're trying, but it's it gets more extreme with the weighted. So just be aware of that if you leave weighted on a whole bunch. So anyway, now that I have this, like I said, I can independently stretch these out. And then if I also come back and I uh, break them on top of that, then I can independently not only move their angles, but the lengths of the curve. And you can see how like that one I could bring in here. I could do like a, a total ramp up on this one and then have like a really short speed down, or I could try to like smooth it out as it comes up. So it's going to come up like a roller coaster and then just go a hair more and then drop down smoothly, you know, or, you know, I could play around with these. It just gives you even more control, right? So I can really change the curves and have complete freedom on that. But the only way I get that ability to change the length of the tangents is again, to come to key, uh, curves and do weighted tangents, right? Now if I go to non-weighted, then you notice they have the little triangles back again and the length won't change no matter how much I move it. Then it's just the angles to work with. So. I like everybody to understand the difference there because a lot of these other ones are just sort of like automated, but the breaking and the uh, freeing of tangents really gives you a lot of freedom um, to, to take it where you want to go, right? So pretty neat stuff. Hopefully that helps you get a little bit more control over it. You can see the variations in, in different types of animation that you're going to get out of it. Okay. All right. That's where I wanted to start with or just kind of touch base on on that one so thanks for tuning in our uh we'll, we'll keep going from there let me know if you have any questions